book about my family, their background, how they ended up in Northampton from various places. And as I've been writing, I've been collecting information from my sister and my brother and cousins and um, pictures and stories and whatever they have that can I can put into this book. And I found um, a little newsletter that my father's um, infantry division um, published in 1940s when he was in camp, I think it was in Brunswick, Georgia. And it was, you know, while the, all the guys were preparing to go off to war, they didn't know who would go um, into battle or who would come home. Fortunately, my father came home, but his best friend, John Daly, didn't. John's name is on the memorial, up in front of Memorial Hall. But what the newsletter would give information about, you know, things that were going on in the camps, the sports games that they put together and things that they did for entertainment and just kind of lighthearted things. And there was one section of the newsletter that was a poet's corner and any of the soldiers could submit poems. And so I have one of those newsletters in my house and I realized that my father had a couple of poems published in this newsletter. A lot of the poems that were in it were about loved ones back home and the men missing their families and thoughts about war and not knowing the future. My father was very um, a happy guy most of the time and pretty optimistic. But he was also silly and had a really good sense of humor and made us laugh when we were kids. So there's one that he wrote that I thought I would read to you tonight. It's called Keep On Smiling. Those with, though the, with troubles you are burdened and your heart may heavy be, let not sorrow make you weary. Laugh and sing, be fancy free. The skies seem gray for everyone when things are going wrong. But dark clouds soon will drift away if you just sing a song. Smiles were never brought by tears, nor by an aching heart. Tis smiles and laughter, joy and songs that make the gray clouds part. You may wish for many things for reasons you start crying, for things someone someday may bring if you just keep on smiling. So I can imagine. <laughs> I could imagine him, um, you know, waiting in the camps, not knowing what was ahead and all the troubles that were in the world at the time. But the next one is kind of more his silly side. And I can just picture him in the camp sitting down and looking at his worn out army boots after years of training. And he wrote this poem called Shoes. Gee, my shoes is all worn out, just when I grew to like them so. But gosh, they're all worn out, and I'll just have to let them go. I've had them almost three years now, but it don't seem quite fair that I should have to give them up and get another pair. But gee, they don't shine no more. And look, the tops is tore, and scuffled and almost torn to shreds, the laces ragged and all threads, and the soles, oh me, they are so thin, to wear these shoes is true a sin. I'll have to get a brand new pair and break them in with lots of care. I'll get them so that they don't squeeze, and then they'll fit as nice as these. <laughs> 